Welcome to another episode of my videos in which I do things and you can never really know what I do next. This time I am in Desmos. But we are not going to make anything in relation to coding plugins today. So don't think that this is a plugin coding video. Maybe there is some overlap because we will use math. But this actually has its origin somewhere else. So sometimes when I make these posts where I share a video of another content creator, it is because I just really respect what they are doing. An outstanding tutorial, not like the rest. And I think that was true for this one, 90 degree rotations by Ideotinium. So I went to Ideotinium's channel to check out what the other videos are like. And notice there are a few videos about using Desmos to generate sound. And while I have no idea what Idiotinium did in this video, so I asked him how it works and he told me that all you have to do is just write tone and then there are two arguments for this method. First one is the frequency and the second one is the amplitude. So this is 420 hertz at 0.4 amplitude. And I could change this value and it would change the sound of course. But we don't just want to work with frequencies, we want to work with pitch. So there is this website which gives you a formula for converting pitch to frequency. So knowing that pitch is some value between 1 and 128 according to the MIDI standard, but it can actually exceed this range, this would be the input and then we would get a frequency output from that. So let's just take this term and write it into Desmos. Now this is what the function looks like, you can just say f of p of the pitch 24 and you know that it's at 32 hertz so if we go to something reasonably high 130 hertz we could hear that we can just slap that into our tone control instead of 500 let's rename this i just i want it to be only f there will be more functions that need the underscore later probably yeah now i can play distinct pitches So let's set for maybe a root note. Yeah, that one sounds nice. So R for root note is 37. And next up I want to describe a melody or like how a melody could progress. So let's just say M equals melody and make a list of musical intervals. For example, this one. Now we could take our tone control thingy and say instead of just taking R, it should take R plus M and then index something from this list. However, we want it to cycle through these numbers and not just index, let's say, whatever is in the first column, which is zero. So we need to have a sequence, call that as going from zero to one. Now that is a parameter that can move and it moves up and when it's done moving up, it comes back down. I don't like that. I want it to be going only forward and then looping. Yeah, now we can use this as a sequencer of some kind. It even has a speed control. We can later use change the BPM. So now this would be sequencer times M length, the length of the list. And we also have to say one plus because indexing in Desmos doesn't start at zero but at one for some reason. Yeah. Now we would like to have some sort of rhythm on this thing, I guess. So we have to consider that this is a value that goes from 0 to 1. So if we just say we mod that with itself but times 3, but still say it should be capped at 1, it will create a faster moving thing that is between 0 and 1. This could be our amplitude times 0.8 maybe that's a little bit slow still yeah maybe and turn it around okay that's actually pretty nice but I want it to be a little bit denser. So let's wrap this around a 10H 
and multiply it with a value like 3. Yeah, now that has a little bit more strength. I want to simplify this a little bit because I want to create more of these things now. So let's say there is a function t that takes in a pitch value and a harmonics value and an amplitude value. And what that does is it uses this function. Oh yeah, I can keep the root node out of it. And then instead of s times m length, I choose pitch and I choose a. And I choose for h, that is the harmonics. So that is multiplied with the output frequency. And now if I use this method, instead of tone directly, I should be able to just tell it, okay, the pitch should be s times m length. The harmonic should be 1 and the amplitude should be A. And now this gives me the advantage that I can copy it and just say, okay, second harmonic and quieter. Or maybe third harmonic if I wanted to go into a square wave direction. Okay, let's say it's like this. Nice. It feels a little bit like designing an organ to do something like that. Now we would like to have a secondary melody, I suppose. Let's try something of twice the length, but first of all we need some more tones in here. Zero. Da, 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 I hope I didn't get anything wrong. And now we should be able to just create this thing as well. But we need to create a new t function because we now need to have a different function in here. Now I wish I was in C++ where I can just define an std function replaceable for whatever function I want to come up with. But we are in Desmos. So let's define a new function. I need to think for that. So this is basically T2, it has the same arguments, but it uses M2 instead. Yeah, I think apart from that, it's pretty much the same. So now let's use T2 of, well, we can just say T2 and then M2 length. Okay, I see the problem. I am still using A and A doesn't have the right rhythm here. So let's make something similar to A and use that instead. A2 will use 32 notes and maybe 10H a little bit less so that we can actually hear the pokiness of the sound. Maybe in order to do that we should actually replace 10H with power of 2. I want it to have a bit of a higher octave. Yeah, in that case I can just basically make an octave parameter and say 0 to let's say 4 or 5 maybe even. 
And now instead of the one here, I have two to the power of octave. Yes. I want to put this into multiple places, so I guess this has to be its own parameter. Perfect. to be gated though so let's say um, a of r so a of random is random 16 now i have a list of 16 random elements and i could say okay whatever this is um, should be gated or in other words multiplied with the random values so a of r of 1 plus s times a of r dot length well that became a little bit too complicated but okay okay so most of these random values are probably just way outside the correct range for example let's see one okay that's inside zero and one yeah that looks good actually but i wanted them to have a bit more of a gatey effect so let's actually round the output from this list so that values above 0.5 let the signal through and values below do the opposite yeah that adds some nice new um, let's say dynamic let's duplicate this line and put another octave in here make this much quieter I feel like I'm making ringtones again. <laughs> now let's go for something different, shall we? We can go back to our initial function that just converts pitch to frequency. And we can actually parameterize some of the things that we find in here. Like the most common thing would be to say, okay, there can be some sort of master tune and it's usually located at 440. If we replace this parameter here, then we can see that we can now softly frequency shift everything around. The 
this is the holy frequency that everyone who is a little bit esoteric except me for some reason finds very important and this is actually the most important frequency that is just very underrated and here is the frequency that we all know and love 430 hertz but that's not all, we can do more. Let's go with 12 parameter. That is the Xen scale, it is how many pitches there are um, per octave. So let's say a range between 1 and 48. Implement the Xen parameter, going back to 12, because we have 12 semitones in our 12 tone equal temperament scale. But now we can change the Xen scale on the fly. Now you might be wondering what the fuck is this? Why does it just go so super dull? When you distribute the distance between the intervals differently then it happens when you go down with the numbers much faster that you go from one frequency to a wildly different frequency. And it's the other way around when you go to higher Xen scales where there is almost no difference between the pitches. We need a parameter that helps us to transpose this mass and that is the reference pitch parameter and it's typically located at 69 but according to the MIDI standard it can be between 1 and 127 uh, or 8 because we start at 1 and not at 0. So if we put that here then it first sounds like this but then can just transpose it somewhere else. And now we can actually experiment with the low Xen scales because we can put them back into audible range. That's nice. Let's try 5 Edo. That's a banger. Let's go for Edo. Oh yeah. That's an angry one. But I like it. Fuck you, fuck you, and fuck you. I'm so angry, that's the emotion of this one. It becomes increasingly harder to find the correct transposed value reference pitch because you know the range of notes is so high in frequency this sounds like it tries to alert me of something wow that's surprisingly nice for two edu now you just want to know what is one edu like right one Edo is the Xen scale that only contains octaves. Now let me show you something else. You can actually say that there should be no steps in the Xen scale. Now it's floating three from the integers. This one was surprisingly good because what it means to be on a Xen scale that is not an integer is that there is not an octave after every doubled frequency if that makes sense. For example on 7.5 Edo because 0.5 is half of 1 
that would mean that every two times that a frequency can be twice as big there is only an octave because the first time it just skips the frequency you know and at some values it can just take almost infinitely long to the point where it wouldn't really make sense anymore to speak about octaves at all yeah i typically don't like that i just want to keep it in the octave range but yeah that's something that you can do in desmos and um when i tried this a little bit earlier before deciding to make this video i saw that as an opportunity to show everyone how cool it can be if a door just allows you to act freely on the Xen scale. Granted, current doors cannot do that because of the MIDI 1 standard that just says that MIDI notes have no frequency but just a pitch. Because that means that every VST developer has to implement how they want to work with pitch over and over again in the plugin and every plugin can do it differently. Typically every plugin just uses this method but without making these three things parameters and that results in a VST experience where you cannot change the Xen scale and also have a bit of a hard time figuring out other interesting alternative temperaments but that could be fixed by a good plugin standard and currently there is this big hype about clap because allegedly it has a lot of features that we really want to have but if there is one feature that would really make a big difference in my opinion because it can you know make whole new genres come up basically whole new types of chords with whole new emotional qualities it would be a feature that enables us to use Xen scales with the best workflow imaginable a workflow like here where you can just set it globally and then it will work for everything everywhere and i think a plug-in standard would have the ability to accomplish that i mean think of it if the clap developers just said that every plug-in has the duty to um, organize and keep track of a parameter value or something like that that describes the Xen scale and that this information has to be filled in by the host and that would enable host developers on the other hand to give the user a global Xen scale parameter in the project settings of the door similar to how you would set up the sample rate or the bit depth or maybe it would be more like a tempo track thing where you can set the Xen scale for different parts of the project depending on some automation, you know. The thing is just, it should not be the responsibility of the plug-in developer to define what the Xen scale is right now because that is typically not something that changes from track to track. So it is the responsibility of the plug-in format to enable the DAW developer to implement something like that. That's how I see it. If we can accomplish that in the most popular DAWs and especially bit because that's the one I want to use then then we would have a whole new way of making music that would be exactly as cool as what you just experienced with Desmos but with all of the other door features that we all know and love I mean it's an incredible feeling to make music with Desmos it might look a little bit funny if you are not doing it yourself and just think to yourself like Haha, I don't want to get too crazy with math no I just want to hop on my door but it's a great feeling to use this and nevertheless I don't want to use this exclusively to make music just because I'm a fan of Xen scales. I want you to see this as an inspiration for what could be a cool feature in DAWs. I hope I could get my point across and I'm looking forward to everyone's Desmos compositions that will be posted in the near future because I feel like this could become a pretty dense trend just like the aim break thing lately.